Hey everybody, Dr. P here. The next question I got was, can we do different airplane problems? As a general principle, I don't actually solve any of the homework problems that you have in Math 223 unless you come to me individually and we can work them out together. Uh, so I'm not going to work out one of the actual web assigned problems here, but I've constructed a problem that I think uses some of the same strategies and I hope you'll find it helpful. Uh, this is a problem about a river and me trying to swim, which is humorous in and of itself. Okay, so let me set this up for you. This is a river. For those of you who grew up in Arizona, a river is just a long body of water. This is me, Dr. P. I swim very efficiently at a rate of 3 miles per hour. The river is 500 feet wide, and directly across the river from me there is a restaurant that serves tacos and beer, and I'm hungry. I would like to swim across the river and go to this restaurant, but there is a catch. Because it's a river, it has a current of 1 mile per hour this way which means that in order for me to swim directly to the restaurant, I'm going to have to angle my swimming to the right in such a way that my swimming counteracts what the current is doing to me. So I'm going to have to swim at some angle other than the vertical. And I would like to know what that angle is. Before I go on and start talking about how to solve the problem, I would like it if you would pause the video and try to work out this angle for yourself using everything that you've learned from chapter 13. So, don't worry, I'll wait, please pause the video, and try to work out the problem on your own. Okay, I'm assuming that you actually did what I asked and paused the video and tried working out the problem. Now let's talk about how I might solve this problem. There are probably different ways of approaching this. I'll show you the one that's most comfortable for me. This is my swimming vector. Its velocity is 3 miles per hour. I know that I need to angle it because I'm going to be pushed back to the left at a rate of 1 mile per hour. So I need this vector to go down and to the right. So I'm drawing a picture of that here, a larger picture of my swimming vector, which has magnitude 3 miles per hour. All right. Now, that vector is going to have two components. There's an angle here, and the one thing that I know is, be, is that because my current is pushing me back at one mile per hour, I need to push myself to the right at one mile per hour, and that has to come from my three miles per hour of swimming velocity. So I'm going to need this to be one mile per hour, no matter what, okay? Now at this point I have enough information to solve this problem using trigonometry. I can simply look at my right triangle. Say I know that this is 3 miles per hour, and I know that this is 1 mile per hour. So my angle, theta, needs to be the arc sine, or sine inverse, of opposite over hypotenuse, or 1 third. So my angle is going to be the inverse sine of 1 third, whatever that is. I'm not going to run the calculation for you. Feel free to do it on your own. Okay, that's one way using trick. I didn't really use any knowledge about vectors there, except the language to set up the problem. Uh, so now I'm going to show another method that uses the machinery of vectors a little bit more aggressively, and that comes in handy in some situations where an easy trig trigonometric solution is not possible. All right, so same swimming velocity, same current, same angle. By the way, notice that the 500 feet wasn't really important to my solving the problem. It won't be important here either. It doesn't really matter how wide the river is if the current's pushing me purely this way. Okay, so I have two vectors. There's S, which is my swimming velocity, and there's C, which is the current velocity. If I set up a coordinate system in which this direction is the positive I direction, and this direction up is the J direction in my picture, okay, so I and J, I know what this is. I know what the current is in terms of components, it's negative 1 in the i direction, or negative 1i. All right? My swimming velocity is a little bit more complicated because it's going to go at an unknown angle. I'm assuming that I haven't solved the problem already. My swimming velocity is going to have a rightward component, which is equal to 3 times the sine of theta, i 
and the component downward or in the negative j direction that's equal to minus 3 cosine of theta j. All right, now the fact that I have this sine theta on the i and the cosine theta on the j may seem a little bit backwards to you. I know you're probably used to seeing it the other way, but it's because of how this angle is set up. Notice that this component is the opposite leg from this angle, and this component, the downward one, is the leg adjacent to theta. So everything is set up correctly according to the definitions of sine and cosine. Okay, now the direction that I actually end up going is going to be s plus c. That is the work that I do plus the work that the current does on me. And so s plus c is going to be equal to 3 sine theta minus 1 i minus 3 cosine theta j. And at this point, well, what do I want? I want to have some downward velocity, and I want to make sure that that velocity actually is purely downward at the end of the day, meaning that I want my resultant velocity to have no i component at all, which means I need this component, 3 sine theta minus 1, I need that to be equal to 0, which means sine theta needs to be 1 third, and the angle theta needs to be the arc sine of 1 third, which is the same thing that I got before. So I won't work out the rest of the problem. You can figure out what the actual angle is on your own. But you'll notice this time I made the problem manageable by taking all the vectors in the problem, setting up a coordinate system, and breaking everything down into components, and then thinking about what condition I need to be true. In this case, the condition was I needed the sum of all the velocities acting on me to have no i component. And I think there is a problem similar to that in the homework, where you have to make sure that the plane has no j component or something like that. The plane's velocity, I mean. Okay? So setting up appropriate variables and then writing down components for everything tends to be a pretty good strategy if you don't know what else to do. So I hope you'll find that a little bit helpful. Okay, one last question that I got was how do you visualize vectors in 3D? And the answer is there's not one great way to do it. There are good ways in certain situations, but there's not one way that works all the time. Sometimes if I'm just trying to figure out how a problem works, I'll try drawing two vectors just in the plane and pretend that those are my two vectors in 3D. And that sometimes gives me a pretty good idea of what to do. But sometimes it's helpful just to draw a coordinate space the way that you usually would and draw the vectors as best you can. Sometimes they end up not looking very good because the vector ends up pointing in a direction that's really out of the board or into the board and you can't see it very well. And in those cases, I would recommend trying to change perspectives. That is, change the coordinate system so that instead of using the usual one where you have plus x, plus y, and then plus z is upward, you can turn them around so that you have plus x, plus y, and z. One group actually did a lot of work around figuring out how those two coordinate systems or pictures relate to each other. Okay, Sometimes you get a better picture that way just because the perspective shifts the vector so it's not pointing straight at you and you can actually see it. But to answer your question, Visualization in vector calc is partly science, partly art. The art you're going to have to pick up over time with experience. The science we'll talk about when it's appropriate. Uh, we'll get into a lot of that actually in Chapter 12. Anyway, that's the end of this week's Frequently Asked Questions. Hope you found this useful. Uh, please feel free to comment and ask questions. Remember, I only keep doing these if I know that people find them useful. So please let me know uh, what you thought was well explained and where you thought you could use a little more help. Okay, have a great week, and I'll be getting in touch with you soon with your next assignment.